Hi everyone, Charlene Ortiz here. Today is going to be the first week of a new series that I'm starting called Your Workout of the Week, as well as a nutrition tip and a positive thought for the week. And I wanted to start this series just to give you guys some really specific and direct instruction on how to begin a workout program and how to slowly start changing your nutrition habits. I know I've done several workouts in my, um, on my channel and I've done several videos on nutrition. Um, and I'll, I'll definitely put a link to the, my playlist of my nutrition tips um, as well as other um, beginning workout instruction that I've done on my channel at the end of this video. But I wanted to kind of tie it all together uh, in videos that you guys can follow step by step every week. So because this is a channel that does focus on special populations of people with disabilities and limitations, I am gonna be starting off my workouts really slow. But every week I'm going to progress the workouts so you can little by little start to gain strength, stability, um, and start to feel more comfortable with all the movements until you're eventually able to get to a point where you can do a good full body workout uh, with more advanced movements and you're, you're feeling stronger and um, have more endurance and stamina and what have you. I will still be doing my advanced full body workouts. I know I haven't done one for a couple months, but I am planning on doing one the next week or two where I'm going to do an, a, a fairly advanced workout for those of you that still want to do advanced movements. But this is going to be, again, for people that are just beginning, you have some type of limitation or disability where you can't do a typical beginner's workout. And so our first workout is going to be a floor workout. And everything is going to be done from the floor. However, you are gonna to have to be able to get up and move positions. So you wanna make sure that you're gonna be able to do that. Um, what you're gonna need it's just some simple free weights. I have just some simple five pound weights right here. Uh, a yoga mat, um, if you have a yoga mat. And then I have a set of tubing right here that is already set up in the door. And so if you check out my video and I'll put a link in the description below how to build a gym for under $50, I talk about where you can get a set of tubing for a good price and how to shut it properly um, in the door with the door anchor, what have you. Um, so that's just going to be the basic stuff you're going to need for this initial workout. So, all right, guys, um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get onto the floor and begin. Okay, everyone, now we're going to begin our workout. One thing that I did add was a pillow right here, and this will be really beneficial to help to keep your neck in a neutral position while you're laying down, especially if you're someone who has really tight shoulders and upper back and you tend to lift your shoulders up. Um, this will help to keep your neck from going back too much when you're laying down and keep it in a neutral position. So first I'm going to start with just some real basic uh, lower body movements that you can do. And I, several in the, in, the, in the very beginning of my channel, I did do a, uh, a workout that you can do, um, a floor workout that you can do from bed or on the floor that is definitely a lot more basic than this one. However, I will be doing some of the same movements, but just elaborating and just doing a lot more movements today. So like I said, you are gonna have to be able to get up and move around a little bit and change positions in order to get all the exercises in with this workout. Okay, so I'm gonna lay down. And first I'm gonna start with just a basic bridge movement. And so you can start with, your, with just both legs um, elevating your body or if this is too easy for you you can also go to one leg at a time where you put one foot on top of your knee and you just lift your hips up in the air now when we're doing this movement you want to make sure that even though we're laying down we're still maintaining neutral spine we're still keeping that belly button pulled in nice and tight and as we come up, we're not coming up too high and arching our back because that gets us out of neutral. You just want to go as high as, as, as your back um, stays in a neutral position and only as high as what feels comfortable. If in the beginning you can only lift just a little bit, like you have a very limited range of motion, that's perfectly fine. Just start where you feel comfortable. 
So when you're doing this movement, you want to make sure your shoulders are staying down and relaxed. It'll be real easy to lift your shoulders up, but keep them down and relax. And you want to make sure that you're pushing through the heel of the foot, whether you're doing the one side at a time or you're doing both at the same time. If you're going to do, if you're going to do one side at a time, you want to make sure that your hip is not dipping to the side, but it is staying up nice and level while you're doing your movement. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and we'll just begin the full set and I'll do uh, the first few with both legs and then I'll do the last few with one leg at a time just so you guys can see a demonstration of both versions but you do the versions that you feel comfortable with and that you feel like is going to be a good fit for you all right so first I'm going to start with just the basic hip lift all right and I'll do a few repetitions like this and in the beginning, you want to start with um, 10 to 15 repetitions of each, each exercise. Okay, so now I'm going to do my last few repetitions with um, one leg up. Again, my hips are staying level and I'm still keeping my belly button pulled in. I'm going to switch the other side. I'm still, still keeping my belly button pulled in nice and tight. So if you're doing both legs at the same time where you're using both feet to support you um, go ahead and do 15 repetitions if you're doing one leg at a time then you can just do 10 repetitions on each side so it'll be a, a total of 20 for both legs okay so that will be your first exercise again just to kind of get you warmed up and moving the next movement is going to be just a basic bicycle movement and I'm gonna elevate my hips for this movement. And I'm just going to extend one leg and just do a circular bicycle movement like I'm riding a bicycle. Now, if this, again, same rules, make sure the hips aren't dipping down to the side. And as far as the position of your leg, the lower you extend the leg to the floor, the harder it's going to be and the higher it is, the easier it will be. But either way, it's still going to feel like a challenge and you're still going to feel the opposite leg really struggling in order to stabilize you. All right, now I'm going to switch and do the other side. Again, I'm making sure my hips are level, my shoulders are down and relaxed, my belly button's staying pulled in nice and tight. And I'm just doing a nice full extension. Now, if you're not quite ready for this movement, you can do this with your hip with just your hip on the floor, that's fine. You can do it like that to start with um, if you're not quite ready to elevate your hip, okay? So that can be just a beginner version for you. Okay, so now I'm going to go on to just a real basic, easy dumbbell press movement. So I have my two free weights here. I'm just going to pull closer to my body and holding my weights in alignment with my chest okay i don't want them above my face or above my stomach i want them to be aligned with my chest and my wrist will be in neutral you don't want to bend back too much you're just going to open up the weights and bring it till your upper arm just lightly touches the floor and then bring them up and together just like that breathing in and out breathing in and out i'm still keeping my belly button pulled in nice and tight I'm not letting my back arch or anything like that. My belly button's still staying pulled in, keeping my back nice and um, supported and firm and stable. I'm still keeping my shoulders down the whole time. If you want to um, get the abs to engage a little bit more, you can do this with your legs elevated and you do definitely feel your abdominal muscles engage. But again, don't arch your back. You've got to keep that back down and you've got to keep that belly button pulled in tight. So that's, you know, just an option um, for those of you that would like to try doing it in an elevated way. All right, so I'm going to do a couple more. Again, we're doing 10 to 15 repetitions. When you're done, rotate the weights in and keep the elbow in close to the body as you set your weights down to the side. Okay? All right, so this movement, you're going to have to get up and move around a little bit. So this um, is also where my pillow is going to come in handy as well. So for this movement, I'm going to be laying on my belly and I'm going to be using this pillow right here underneath my hips. Because for me personally, when I lay on my stomach without any type of support, my low back will start to get sore and cramped. So I need a pillow to keep my hips in a, in a neutral, my back in a neutral position. 
So I do highly recommend you use your pillow to put underneath your hips. So I have my tubing set up right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and just grab them and bring them in close and just kind of hold them down. And I'm gonna do just a basic lat pull down movement, okay? And this exercise, this lat pull down, I did this one in a basic form in my video, how to do the most common back exercises properly. I do talk about the specifics on how to do this movement properly, but obviously I'll be giving instruction while I'm doing it right now. Okay, so my hips are supported by this pillow. All right, as I'm doing this movement, I'm keeping my neck down in neutral. I'm not lifting my head like that, okay? Because neutral spine starts from the bottom of the skull all the way to the sacrum. So my head stays in neutral. If you want to lift your, your legs to kind of get your glutes to engage a little more, that's fine. If that hurts your low back, that's okay. You can keep them down. Um, but which, again, whichever feels appropriate for you where you're not feeling any uh, unnecessary pain or discomfort. All right, so I have my tubing right here and I'm just going to pull on the bands so that my hands come down to my shoulder and I'm just going to release. I'm breathing out and in. Out and in. So this will be working your lat muscles, your bicep muscles will also be an accessory muscle to this. And I'm also feeling my low back engage as well, which is another reason why I like this movement because there's certainly a lot of muscles being engaged. And again, if you wanna rest your feet down, if it's you know too strenuous on your low back to do this, that's fine. And keep that belly button pulled in nice and tight while you're doing this movement. And you'll be surprised um, how much you feel the muscles in your low back engage to support you when you're doing this movement. So again, this will be 10 to 15 repetitions and relax. So I'm just going to let them go. All right, now from here, I'm just going to go into a little back stretch just to loosen up that, those um, muscles in my low back, my erector spine, angular lat muscles, um, all those muscles that were significantly engaged. And this is one of the few exercises, the few circumstances where it's appropriate to feel strain in your low back because that is specifically one of the muscles that we are, we are uh, working on training. All right, I'm gonna put my pillow back here and I'm gonna grab my tubing again. So now we're gonna do an exercise um, for our tricep muscle and actually another one for our, our um, lat muscle as well. So this one you'll have to hold on to your tubing while you're laying down. So again, you have to be mobile enough to kind of move around while you're doing this. All right, so I'm just gonna lay down and grab my tubing with both my hands. My pillow back in. Okay, so first I'm going to start with just a straight down movement. And again, this is gonna be for my lat muscles. And with this movement, um, you wanna make sure that you stop just at about a slight angle um, above your, not above your head, but kind of in alignment with your head. You don't want to go all the way back like here. Um, just right, right about here will be fine. And bring it all the way down to full extension. And this movement will be, tr will be engaging your rhomboids and your lats. If you really want to intensify um, the effect of this exercise, you can also lift your glutes. And you'll actually get a little bit greater range of motion with your lower body elevated if you want to get your glutes to engage as well. So this will be a little bit more of an advanced version of this movement. But again, you don't have to do that. You can keep the, the glutes down if you want to, but it's just an option for you. All right, and I'm keeping my belly button pulled in tight. I'm breathing out and in and out and in. And again, I'm going all the way to full extension, stopping at just about a slight angle with my head. All right, so after this movement, I'm gonna go right into a tricep press exercise. And this is gonna be working the back of my arm, my tricep muscle. And even though I'm laying down and these movements seem to be <laughs> fairly simple, I'm certainly starting to feel my muscles fatigue. I'm definitely feeling my triceps engage because my triceps are an accessory muscle with the exercise that we just did, the straight arm pull down. 
the triceps are an accessory muscle to that. And so going right into a tricep press movement from here um, is definitely, you know, um, fatiguing them pretty quickly. Now with the tricep, you want to make sure your wrists are staying in neutral. They're not bent like that, but they stay in neutral and that you fully extend all the way and then you just stop at about a 90 degree. Okay, so that'll be the appropriate range of motion and position for your tricep. Okay, so now I'm going to let him go. And I'm just going to release him for now as I get up. I'm going to rotate to the side. Okay, now I'm going to do a basic bicep movement. And so I'm going to put my pillow a little bit closer to where my tubing is at. All right, and so again, I'm just going to grab my tubing. And with this one, I'm just going to lay down. And I'm going to bring my tubing up towards my body. Again, just for my bicep curl. And again, breathing out and in. Out and in. And with any of these movements, if you want to extend your hips, lift your hips up and engage those glutes, uh, feel free. And again, it will just get the glutes to engage a little bit more. All right. And again, breathing out and in. Breathing out and in. And now I'm just going to kind of lift them down just like that. All right, so now I'm going to rotate, push my pillow back up, and lay back down so I'm on the full length of my mat. All right, so that series right there, you will do two to three sets of all those exercises. Again, 10 to 15 repetitions. Now I'm going to show you some ab exercises that you could end with. And these are exercises that I've also done in past workout videos. Um, and I'm just incorporating it into this one now. All right, so the first one is going to be just a basic crisscross movement. And I'm just going to talk about um, specifics about this movement that's important to remember. So again, my belly button stay pulled in nice and tight. So I'm going to put my hands behind my head and let my head just rest on my hands so I'm not feeling strain on my neck. From this position right here, keeping my elbows in a somewhat open position, I'm going to bring my knee to my chest and then I'm going to release and I'm going to switch. With this movement, you want to think about bringing your knee to your chest, not your elbow, but your chest. Because when you do chest to knee, you'll get a better range of motion and it'll follow the natural angle of the oblique muscles better as well. Not only that, you'll be less likely to pull on your head when you're doing chest to knee. Because when you do elbow, you see how I just naturally pull on my neck? That's not, we don't want that. So we want to keep those elbows just in a you know, slightly open position and make sure that our chest is coming to the knee not the elbow okay just like that breathing out and in breathing out and in nice and controlled movements okay definitely one of my favorite exercises certainly a staple exercise in a lot of my my own personal workouts and the workouts i do with my clients and while you're doing this movement, you want to make sure you're still consciously pulling that belly button in, consciously pulling in that transverse abdominis while you're doing your lift and your chest to knee. Okay, so we're going to do, if you want, you can kind of stretch out those abs a little bit. Okay, and again, with a lot of these abdominal um, exercises, you're going to have to consciously engage those abdominal muscles Pull that transverse abdominus in to really get the, the abdominal muscles to engage to their maximum, number one. Number two will also help to protect your low back and keep you from using your low back to assist you with these movements. The next one is going to be just a basic bicycle. And with this one, you're really going to have to think about where your low back is at because your legs are going to be elevated and it's going to be real easy to want to arch your back. So you got to really make sure that transverse abdominis, that belly button's pulled in tight, and your back is nice and anchored and stable. So you're going to bring one leg up at a time, just like this, and then you're just going to do just a little bicycle movement. 
and you'll probably feel this in your quadriceps as well. Now with this movement, the higher you go up, the easier it's going to be. The lower you go, the harder it's going to be. And it all depends on your ability to maintain that transverse abdominus activation without arching your back. Again, my shoulders are down and relaxed as well. So neutral spine um, applies no matter what type of exercise we're doing. Okay, so again, it's just a nice bicycle movement. And you can do, uh, get 15 repetitions on each side. So that would be a total of 30 rotations when you're counting both legs. Okay, so again, the lower you go, the more challenging, the higher you go, the easier it's going to be. So 10 to 15 on each side, as long as you're getting your low back's not arching up. And the next one is gonna be just a real um, simple basic reverse crunch. And same rules will apply where you wanna make sure that your low back is staying in a nice um, stable position and not arching up. So again, one leg at a time will come in and slowly bring your feet to the floor, lifting, breathing out and in. Breathing out and in. So your range of motion with this movement is not important. What's important is your ability to keep your back down. So if this is your range of motion, but you can keep your back down firm, that's fine. Don't worry about going all the way down to the floor. If you can go all the way to the floor and still maintain that, that contraction here, that's fantastic. But it's not as important as keeping this contraction and not letting your back arch. So if that means you have just a little range of motion, but you're keeping your abs in, you're feeling your abs are the primary mover and you're not feeling your back engaged, that's fine. Okay, so let's do a few more breathing out. And in, breathing out, and in. Last one, out, my shoulders are relaxed, and in. And my feet are gonna rest down on the mat. Okay, so now we're gonna end with just a couple of basic stretches. If you want more of a, of a full stretch, you wanna check out my video, um, how to do a full body stretch. And I'll try to put a, uh, annotation to that at the end of this video. Uh, but I'm going to do just a few basic stretches that you can do at the end of your workout. So first I'll start with just my hamstring where I have this leg bent right here. I'm just straightening my leg. And I'm just bringing this leg back as far as what feels comfortable. It is always um, a lot more preferable to stretch after a workout than before a workout. After a workout, your muscles are going to be warmed up. They're gonna be a lot more flexible and you're gonna have a lot less risk for injury if you stretch after a workout. So definitely much more preferable to stretch after your workout as opposed to before the workout. So you can skip the stretch before your workout. Um, maybe warm up a little bit. Maybe do uh, go for a, little, a short little walk or um, something like that. Um, but certainly it's definitely much better to stretch when you're done with your workout because uh, like I said, you get a, a much more effective stretch. All right, so now I'm gonna bring my knees into my chest and that will just stretch out my low back and a little bit of my glutes as well. And again, I do, I do a lot more stretches in my video, how to do a full body stretch, if you wanna see more stretches in that video. And now I'm just gonna go to the side. I'm gonna lay my arms up to the side and let my legs just kind of fall to the side. And just be careful with your low back with this one, okay? Just be careful that you don't go, that when you lay your, on your legs to the side, go slow. Just go very slow. Because again, you don't wanna you know, strain your low back too much. But you will feel a great stretch in your lower back. If this, if this isn't good enough for you, like if you're really flexible, then you can straighten this leg and then use the opposite arm to pull the other leg over. So this is also another option. Um, but again, you want to keep your arms straight out to the side. It will help to open up and stretch out your chest. And you want to look the opposite direction that your legs are going. And again, it will just help to intensify the stretch. So again, you can have both legs bent or you can do one leg. Or you can even just let them, again, just let, lay to the side like that. And now the opposite side. Again, nice, full stretch. And you can ex 
accentuate it. Again, if that's not enough of a stretch for you, if you're a little more flexible. And I'm not holding the stretches for very long just for the sake of time, but when you're doing these stretches at home, you wanna hold them for at least 30 to 60 seconds. Okay, so now I'm gonna to rotate to the side and I'm gonna let myself up. And this is definitely the most appropriate way to get up off of the floor. Okay, so that is gonna be your workout for the week. So I want you to do this workout two to three days, um, this two to three times this week. And when you're doing this on your own, I only did one set of everything, but you'll be doing two to three sets of everything. Now, when you're doing these workouts, please be very honest with yourself at the, the level of intensity that you can do. Like for example, if you're doing the hip lift and the one with two legs at a time is real easy, then go to one leg. As long as you can keep the, the hips level in the appropriate form, uh, really challenge yourself. Because if you don't challenge yourself, you're, you're not going to see results and you're not going to get stronger. And so with the tubing, if the tubing is too easy, too light, you're not feeling any fatigue, you're not feeling any strain, then get a, a heavier tubing or add another, another tubing onto to the set that you're using um, or what have you. So be honest with yourself on the level of intensity that you do and make sure that you're doing an intensity that you know is challenging for you so you can see results and you can progress as long as you can maintain the appropriate form and you don't injure yourself. So next week, I'm going to be doing a workout in a seated position. Um, so that'll be a little more challenging than this one. And then again, each, each week will be a progression that's gonna get harder and harder. Now, if it takes you more than one week to build up strength, that's fine. If you need to do this workout for two or three, for, or three weeks before you can go on, that's okay. Do it for as long as what's appropriate for you. Again, as long as you're not doing it, you know, for six weeks and it's super easy and you're not really going to see results. So um, again, I'll leave that up to you guys and trust that you will challenge yourself to what your ability is. And so again, I just want to make sure that you do see results and you progress and get stronger. As far as your nutrition goes, um, again, at the end of this video, I'm going to put an annotation to my nutrition playlist so you can watch my nutrition videos on the three steps of nutrition. But there is one step, uh, one tip I'm going to give you guys every week to slowly and gradually start to improve your nutrition habits. Some of them you might already be doing it. If, if you are, then that, that's great. Um, but the tip for this week is going to be replacing two sugary beverages a day with straight water, nothing but water. And so if you're someone that drinks soda or juice or, you know, whatever it is throughout the day, and let's say you drink, you know, five or six beverages throughout the day, and most of them are juice, I want you to replace two of those beverages with just water. That right there will be a calorie deficit of about 400 calories a day. Or it, it'll, it'll reduce your calorie intake by about 400 calories, so, which is a pretty good, you know, reduction in calories considering it's such a simple change. So that is going to be your tip for the week. Um, and next week, I'll give you another tip to add on to this one. So little by little, you can start to improve your nutrition habits and it won't be too painful or too traumatic for you. And the last thing I want to end with is a positive thought for today. Because when we're trying to improve our health and our wellness, our thought process is a huge aspect of that, probably bigger than anything else. Because if we have a lot of negative thoughts and a very negative um, view of who we are and what, what we're capable of or what have you, it's really going to affect our ability to be successful really in anything in our life. And so there are going to be different thoughts, positive thoughts that I want you to think about throughout the day. And you can even write it down if you want to and put it on a sticky note on your bathroom mirror so you can remember to, you know, tell yourself this thought or um, whatever, you know, so you can find different ways to remind yourself that you want, this is something that you want to think on a more regular basis. And again, and th this applies to everybody, you know, for all of us, because the way we think drastically affects um, the quality of our life, it really does. So the positive thought for the week is going to be, I am successful in all that I do. 
It does not matter if that's true right now, because <laughs> some of you might be thinking, but that's not true. I failed at everything in my life. Or <laughs> maybe that you feel that way. I, know I feel that way sometimes. Um, regardless of whether you think it's true or not, I still want you to say it to yourself. Because it would, because I want any negative thoughts that you think throughout the day or you fill your mind with, I, I want you to replace them with positive thoughts. And I promise you, it really does make a difference on how you feel. And it really does make a difference on how you approach, you know, different situations in your life. So I am successful in all that I do. All right, guys. So that is going to wrap it up for this week. And next week, I will have a next workout of the week, as well as nutrition tip and positive thought for the week. But I still will be doing my other videos Um you know, like I'm going to be doing a video on um, how to train your subconscious and I'm going to be doing a video on muscular dystrophy and um, other, you know, chronic disorders that people deal with as well. So during the week, I will still be doing those types of videos as well. So, okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you really um, enjoy this workout, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please comment below so that I can address any issues that you have and make sure that you're completely comfortable with everything that we did today. Or if there's any specific videos or topics you'd like me to talk about, let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll do a video on any topic to help you reach your health and fitness goals. All right, guys, remember, take care of yourself, protect yourself physically and emotionally, and don't forget your health is your most valuable asset. Invest in it. Bye-bye.